See all these lenses over here? We're gonna take all these regular lenses and essentially turn them into extreme macro lenses. Why, you might ask? Because we can and it's fun. We've got APS-C lenses, we've got full frame lenses, ultra wide, all the way up to this extreme telephoto over here. All the results are gonna vary because all the lenses have different construction. And honestly, I have no idea what to expect. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's get started. Welcome back my friends. And what we're doing is taking all these lenses behind me and essentially turn them into a macro lens. It's gonna be a lot of fun and there's gonna be a few ways that we can do this. We've got extension tubes, we have screw on macro type filters. As well, we're gonna utilize some settings in our camera to get us closer to the action. Now these are things that you can do for a relatively inexpensive price or completely free depending on what it is. And you can take any lens that you have and turn it into some sort of macro photography lens. I love macro, it's a great field to get into. It's really creative and there are literally no limits. So let's dive in and check out some of these lenses from an ultra wide prime all the way up to this crazy telephoto and see what we get. All right, we're diving into our experiment here. We've got our first lens, which is a 16 millimeter F1.4 prime ultra wide lens. Now I'm gonna be using a crop sensor camera to get as much reach as I can. Now I could shoot on my 35 millimeter full frame camera and use crop mode. If you do have that, that's an option for you. But instead, I'm gonna be shooting on this today. So let's throw on our 16 millimeter F1.4 and have a look at what this looks like before we throw all our stuff on. So I've got a couple subjects here lined up and obviously for a wide angle lens, it's not gonna be great. Not a great minimum focus distance for, for macro work, that's for sure. So having said that, let's stop that and let's put on our extension tubes and see what happens. Again, when we put on extension tubes, what we're essentially doing is changing the minimum focus distance of our lens. So as we move our front element away from our camera, our, obviously our minimum focus distance is going to change. It's gonna be different from what the lens is actually designed to do. And let's have a look. Interesting. So it looks like it's not gonna work. So wide angle lens are quite complicated to engineer. And when it comes to macro, I guess it just, I guess it's really not gonna work because we get so close that we can see something, but then we've lost all our light. So that's just interesting right there with our 16 mil. So what about our Nisi close-up lens filter? Why don't we throw that on instead and see if that makes a difference? So what I'm gonna do in this case, because our little lens here has 67 millimeter filter threads, but our close-up lens has 77, I'm gonna need some kind of step up or down kit so I can actually throw those on together. So that's what I've got here is a little step up ring kit. And I'm gonna see that I need 77 millimeter filter threads all the way down to 67. So those are the two that I'm gonna choose. Careful with the threads. I'm gonna take off my extension tubes. Let's see what that does for our minimum focus distance. It looks like it's focusing fine. Does it change our minimum focus distance? Oh, well, I think it does. We're, get, we're able to get a lot closer. Or, or, or are we really? So clearly this is not a great lens for any kind of macro work whatsoever. So when it comes to the 16 millimeter F 1.4 prime lens, that's a, that's a no go, not good. I wanted to mention as well, anytime that you're shooting any type of macro work, I really, really suggest that you have a bunch of cleaning supplies. That is an absolute must. When you're shooting high magnification, the things are gonna show up everywhere. Your sensor dust, your lens dust, your subject. So if you can, spray it off, clean it off, dust it off, do whatever you have to do to make it as clean as possible to avoid tedious, tedious work in post but let's have a look at our 16 to 35 and have a look at how it performs with all our fun stuff on it. So to save some time, here's the original photos at 16 millimeters and 35 millimeters showing you that this is what you can expect. When we threw on the extension tubes once again at 16 millimeters ultra wide, it just wouldn't focus. So it's safe to say for wide angle lenses, you should steer clear of these type of macro shoots. Zooming into 35, however, I was able to take a few photos, but absolutely nothing special, and the image quality did suffer greatly. 
Next up is our 85mm f1.8 prime. Let's see what that looks like before we throw some of our stuff on it here. Now, typically an 85 is gonna have a focus distance of several feet, about three feet. So let's have a look at what that looks like. And right about there. So that's about three feet. So now let's throw on our extension tubes and see what difference that makes, if any. And yeah, it sure does. That's gonna take our minimum focus distance very, very, maybe probably about a foot, maybe 14 inches here. Crazy. So there's our minimum focus distance from three feet to about one foot, not bad. And why not, let's throw on our close-up filter to see what else we can get out of it. And it happens to be the same filter size, so that's good. And wow, this is gonna let us get even closer. Not bad at all. Not bad, and let's go to our other subject where we can actually get pretty close now. And I'm still using autofocus and everything because my extension tubes do have electronic contacts to allow my camera to talk to my lens still, which is great. There's a shot with our 85 and with both. So that's pretty good, that's, that's near macro. I wouldn't say that's quite one to one, but it's, uh, it's not bad. So it looks like we're finally getting somewhere with some decent results out of an 85 millimeter prime. Our next lens is a standard zoom lens. It's the classic Tamron 28 to 75. And let's have a look and see what that looks like in terms of focal length. It does have a decent minimum focus distance to begin with. About five inches, and this is on the wide side. So what about on the telephoto side? I'm gonna have to back up a little bit. About two feet, I'd say, foot and a half. And that's what that looks like. So from here, let's throw on some extension tubes and see what that looks like. So on the 28 side, it's not gonna actually work. What about the 75? The 75 definitely works right away and allows me to get a heck of a lot closer. Let's keep going. I'm actually so close that I'm pushing the paper at this point. See if we can't get over here with our little friend and see how close we can get. As you can see, isn't bad at all. Let's throw on our Nisi close-up filter. At 28 again, not doing much. What about 75? Absolutely, I can get nice and close. That's literally as close as I can get here. What about our little guy? Turn a bit of light on to help me out with my exposure. So again, what are we? Maybe an inch and a half from the front element. Not bad at all. And that's our 28 to 75. Let's move on to our next, which happens to be actually a 90 millimeter macro. So let's see what we can do with a macro when we make it ultra, ultra macro. So here's our 90 millimeter macro at one to one. And this is just stock from the lens. Let's see what this looks like. So that's exactly what one to one magnification ratio is right there. With our extension tubes on our 90 millimeter macro, let's see what the difference makes. Wow, quite a significant difference. Very close up. Very cool. And naturally next, of course, we have to throw on the close-up filter to see what we get. So here's a look in real time with the extension tubes and the close-up filter on our 90 millimeter macro and check out that razor thin depth of field. This is definitely some extreme macro. Not bad, so so far it's the 90 millimeter macro that's winning by itself and definitely with the additional help there. Next up, we're bringing out the big guns. We've got the Sony G Master 100 to 400. Let's see what it does with the extension tubes on. And I can't say that I've tried many macro work with it. And it definitely works. Pretty darn close. And that's at 100 millimeters. Let's try and go to 200. Autofocus still working great. You're gonna have to back up a bit here. 200, looking good. And what about 400? Not bad. How about our other subject?
So not quite what I was expecting, but it is a telephoto lens. Let's throw on the Nisi filter and see what happens. It just so happens to be 77 millimeter filter threads as well. All right. Again, at 100 millimeters, it's going to allow us to get even closer. Not bad. How about our little guy there? Not bad at all. How about 200 millimeters? Not bad at all. And how about 400 millimeters? Now at 400, we are getting a bit of weird focusing here. It's looking a bit blurry. Let's try on our other little subject there. So at 400 millimeters there, the image quality was definitely compromised. So that's the limitation of this lens. Time to check out the big guy. So here's the beast, the 200 to 600 millimeter telephoto. And this thing has an incredible minimum focus distance of about, I think four feet. So here's an idea of what that looks like without any extension tubes or front filters on. And in this lens's case, because of the massive 95 millimeter filter threads, I'm unable to use my front filter. Let's throw some extension tubes on and see if we can get anything out of this beast. So I did have to move back quite a bit further than I thought I would, and it did cut down the minimum focus distance by about half. The results were actually quite a bit better than I was expecting. And here's a look at the before and the after with the extension tubes. And here's a comparison of our smaller subject at the different focal lengths. Obviously, hand holding a 600 millimeter lens is not ideal, and I wouldn't really recommend this one particularly for any macro work. But those extension tubes do make a difference. Okay, so here's a quick recap of all our lenses and which focal lengths to avoid if you're gonna be using extension tubes or close-up filters. The 16 millimeter F1.4 ultra wide did perform with the close-up, but not the extension tube. The ultra wide zoom lens didn't really perform well at all. So I'd avoid really anything under 50 millimeters. Our 85 millimeter F1.8 prime performed pretty well across the board with everything you threw at it. Our 28 to 75 did pretty well on the telephoto side of things with both situations but again, 28 millimeters is gonna be just too wide. It's not really surprising that our 90 millimeter macro performed great. So if you do have a dedicated macro lens and you wanna take it to the next level, well, you can do that by putting on any of these gadgets. The 100 to 400 just happens to be one of my favorite lenses, and this proves that it's even more versatile than I thought it was. So in a pinch, you could even use this thing as a macro lens. Maybe I'll do a dedicated video just on that. And as far as the 600 millimeter goes, well, it definitely wasn't designed as a macro lens, and the results kind of confirm that. Hand holding even wide angle macro lenses is difficult, so throw a 600 millimeter into the mix, and you're gonna have a serious challenge on your hands. So that's it for all these lens tests. I really hope you had fun watching the video, guys, and if you wanna see more just like it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'll drop affiliate links of all this stuff down in the description for you, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.